Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Once upon a time, in the land of late night Facebook messages and suspicious chat heads, a tale of love, betrayal, and awkward phone swipes unfolded before our very eyes. Today on our space, who needs reality TV when you've got a front row seat to this real life drama? Facebook notification exposed wife's cheating of five years, got separated, and ripped her off. I've been married for 11 years with two kids, eight and five. My married life has been great until now, something I treasure a lot. Wife had been an amazing partner and a great mom to my kids. However, something happened two days ago that made me question my perfect happy family. This Friday night, we were lying on our bed to sleep. Wife was showing some funny videos on her phone, and that's when the Facebook message popped tingled with the chat head. It was there for a good five seconds. I saw the name and profile picture on the chat head before she swiped it away. It was 1 a.m. in the night. I asked her whose text it was. She replied, I don't know, maybe some random on Facebook. I gave her back the phone and asked if she wants to respond. She said, no, must not be urgent, and we continue to watch the video. A few minutes later, another message popped up from the same chat, and she swiped it off again. This happened a few more times, and every time it occurred, our awkwardness grew, followed by moments of silence. I could feel the cold, eerie vibe between us. I could sense an urgency that she wanted the phone back, but couldn't ask because that would lead to another series of questions for me. We no longer were enjoying the funny video. We were just pretending to watch it. My mind was clogged with the thought of who was messaging her so late, why she had gotten awkward about it, and why is she lying that she didn't know when we both had clearly seen the name on the pop head. I'm sure she also must have been restless waiting to have her phone back. When it happened for the fifth or sixth time, I handed her the phone back to her and said, you should see if someone needs any help. She tried to assure me that it was fine, but I suppressed my doubts and said maybe someone is in an emergency and needs something so she should see to it. I gave her the phone and rolled to the other side of the back. I could see the reflection of her screen light on the ceiling. A few minutes later, she put down the phone and hugged me from the back. She tried to cuddle and initiate intimacy, but I didn't reciprocate. I felt like candy given to an upset kid. She realized that I had got suspicious of those creepy late night messages and she tried to cover it up through lovemaking. The next morning, I was still feeling low about the entire stuff. She asked me what's wrong. I told her nothing, but when she insisted, I asked her who had messaged her that late in the night. She said she had not seen it yet. It was a plain bald lie on my face. I'm damn so sure that she had seen those messages right after I gave her phone back. In fact, I'm pretty sure that she had responded to those texts as well for the moment she got the phone back. I'm just flustered with the way she's lying in my face. I said, then check it now. She raised her eyebrows that I was being nosy in her business. I'm not nosy. I'm bothered because she was lying. She then picked up the phone and pretended to open the messenger and read it. Then she said, Oh, it's my coworker from my previous workplace I used to work five years ago. I asked her what was the message about. She said, Nothing, just general stuff. I asked, What general stuff? She replied, Oh, nothing important. I instinctively replied, Show me. She froze. She was like, What? Why do you want to see my phone? Do you suspect anything here? I said, I'm not suspicious, but probably curious because of the way she had been acting about this text. I had never been so suspicious about her actions, but God knows why this time. I just don't feel right about it. She has been gaslighting the situation since then. I don't know what's so wrong with asking her to show the phone. I said I would only see the chat and nothing else, yet she's not willing to show me. She says I'm invading her privacy. I don't know, guys. If she's asking to see your wife's phone is a privacy invasion, or if I'm an a-hole here, would appreciate any fresh perspective. Edit to add. I read the first four to five comments and wanted to clarify a few things. I'm asked if we have access to each other's phone. Answer to this is, she has my password and she sometimes accesses it to make international calls. I don't know her password. Even when I needed to use her phone, she would unlock it and give. I never asked for her password. Never felt the need to know it. This time also, I'm not asking for her password. All I'm saying is show me the chat. That's it. Second, this is the first time I've ever asked her to show me the phone. I have never done this before. As I said, I never got suspicious of her before. If I missed adding any crucial information, I would be adding them in the comments and replies. It's understandable that you're feeling a bit suspicious, OP. I mean, late night messages from a coworker from five years ago? That's enough to raise an eyebrow or two. And the whole dodging the question routine? Definitely not adding any points to the trust meter. Update one. Last one week has been difficult with so many fights and yelling at home. My house happened to be a peaceful place. The only yelling was of my children's fights, but now it has become a battleground between me and my wife. 
We fought for the whole of last week and we both were pretty much stuck to our guns. She was assuring me that there was nothing wrong in the chats. They just used to occasionally check up on each other, send birthday wishes and festive greetings, and nothing more than that. I said if that's so, then why is she not showing me that? I want to see that for myself. She said it was not about showing the message, it was about trust issues, and that I didn't trust her, and that I was intruding on her privacy. She thought I would move on from this soon and forget about it. She tried all means to distract me from this topic. The very next day, she planned for a gaming evening. That didn't go too well because I was feeling low for most of the time. I tried to be cheerful with the kids, but also made it clear to wife that this is not going to help. Then two days later, she announced at the dinner table that we were going for a three-day camping trip to freshen up. I understood her tricks and said I was busy would not be able to make it at such a short notice. The kids have their exams this month. They were also kind of confused why she was planning a trip just before their tests. When none of her tricks worked, she finally agreed to show the chats. But she laid some ground rules that I wouldn't check anything else and ask no questions. I said I won't check anything else but cannot promise that I won't ask anything. She said, well in that case, let me give you a heads up. There might be an occasional spell of flirtatious talk, so don't freak out. Now it got wild. She assured me that it was harmless and didn't mean anything at all. It was just some generous compliments on her pictures. I said, sure, I don't mind any innocent flirt. I'm not going to break my head and definitely not my marriage for something so trivial. I read the chats and it was an on and off conversation, but I felt it was inconsistent and there was no chat prior to last year's Thanksgiving. I asked what happened to the previous chats because she had known him for six or seven years. He was her colleague from work. She said she deleted it. She claimed she deletes her chats every few months. I asked what was the logic behind that. She said nothing just like this. I wanted to check other chats to see if she deleted them too, but she reminded me that I promised I wouldn't check anything else. So I had to adhere to the rules. The situation has become worse than before. It has led to more doubts and apprehension than clarity. I was looking up here for any hack to retrieve the deleted messages, but couldn't find any. Not sure if there's any way out. Do you guys know of any such hack to retrieve deleted Facebook messages? Would appreciate the help. Seems like you stumbled upon the digital equivalent of Pandora's box, a treasure trove of deleted messages and flirtatious banter all neatly tucked away in the virtual realm. Who knew a simple gaming night and a surprise camping trip could morph into a full-blown interrogation? Something tells me the juicy stuff was deleted, and the camping trip sounds like a means of distraction. Update 2 Some follow-up to what happened next. As you told, there were no ways to retrieve the deleted messages from Messenger. It doesn't go to the archive, so no luck in that front. Wife insisted that I move on from that incident, but I had this nagging feeling that something was not right. She suggested we go for a vacation. I said, instead let's go for a couples therapy. She was repulsive, saying we didn't need any. I said I needed one because what I'm going through is not normal. My trust has run thin and we cannot have a healthy relationship without trust. She agreed to visit the couple's counselor. Visit one. She's too guarded about her feelings. She measures her words before answering anything. She's more like, I don't see any problem in our marriage. It's just you, but I'm here to support you. The therapist made it clear that it's about both of us. Even if it's me who wanted a counselor, the reason is her. So she has to be involved and cooperative. Wife said she needs time to open up. We come back from the session and I find her absent-minded. Any confrontation with her leads to a fight these days. She gaslights it and makes a point that I'm ruining our beautiful marriage with my baseless suspicions. Yesterday, she went grocery shopping and her car got flat tires. She asked me to pick her up. While driving back, she was cuddling my arms. I asked her if she wanted to stop by for a coffee. She nodded yes. She was silent for most of the drive to the coffee house. She was anticipating a confrontation. I also thought this was the best time to talk about it. I asked her if she wanted to confess anything. This is the time. She said they flirted with each other. Flirting was fine with me until it was within the limits. She remained silent and said on a few occasions, the limits might have gotten crossed. Limits crossed as in sexting, she said. I asked how many times. I said, I don't have the count on and off in the last five, six years. My heart was pounding as she was unfolding a new angle to my every question. I dreaded asking her the next question. All my deadliest nightmares were coming true. I didn't know if I was ready for the answer that might come to my next question. With severe hesitation, I asked her, is that all? Was any physical relationship involved? She took a few seconds to reply and that pause felt like forever to me. She started sobbing and replied, yes, once. That moment I lost my crap. Like, what the hell? She's been sleeping with her coworker at my back and I have no idea about it. I freaked out. I stood up and left the coffee house. She followed me outside. I was racing up and down near my car. She said, it was a long time ago and she had almost forgotten what had happened. 
Same classic line of every cheater that it means nothing. I love you and my family is everything for me. I said, no, family is not everything for you. If it was, you wouldn't have screwed it up. I got into the car and before I could drive off, she hopped in. I dropped her home. She insisted we have this discussion in her bedroom, but I was done talking to her. I went to the bar and sat there until midnight wondering, where did I go wrong to deserve this betrayal? I haven't been home for two days. She's been calling me nonstop to have a conversation, but I have hung up on her. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I'm absolutely clueless. I couldn't fathom this to be physical cheating. To the extreme, I imagined it to be emotional cheating, but now what do I do? Dang, this is hard. Flirting, sexting, physical cheating? It's like she's collecting cheating bingo points or something. Update three. More updates on my situation. Three days after that confession, I got a call from the therapist. She asked me if I was going to join my wife for the session. I said, no, I'm done with it, and I'm in no mood to repair this relationship. She said wife was there and was waiting for me so that she could come clean of her guilt. I said, let her go to hell with her guilt and hung up. That same day, I went home. She asked me why I didn't go to the counseling session. Don't I want to work on our marriage? I said, no, and moved my essentials to the guest bedroom. She insisted that we seek therapy and work on this. We have two small kids, and for their sake, we should put in an effort. I shooed her away and didn't talk to her for more than a week. Meanwhile, I sensed that my home was getting colder. My children were silent, which was very unusual for their behavior and age. They quickly noticed that I was sleeping in the guest bedroom and not talking to mom. They questioned me about it, and I gave some BS reason, but the problem was me. I was stalling it. I was delaying making a decision. I realized we cannot live like this. It's either I have to heal and forgive her, or I should separate and move out. Hanging in between was the worst for the kids. I decided to go for couple therapy before making my next move. Visit 2. It was intense for both of us. I tell you, whatever happened until now was not at all. I got to know the complete truth and thankfully, so I attended the session. It helped me make a decision. Wife confessed that she slept with a fair partner some five years back. She was going through emotional turmoil. She had lost her mother back then while battling postpartum trauma after the birth of our second child. Second pregnancy and delivery was difficult for her and losing her mother just after that made the situation worse for her. Though I remember having her back and doing everything in my means to support her at the time. She claimed she needed a place to channelize her turmoil. She could think of nothing better than cheating. It happened in this way. He congratulated her on her second child. Then she told him about her mother's demise and he lent his emotional support. She opened up to him about her postpartum turmoil and they got engaged in sexting. Then I went for a week long trip and they slept. That was the first time. Guilt kicked in for both of them and they ghosted each other. They go no contact for more than a year. Then he messaged her on Thanksgiving and things got heated up again. They slept again and then stopped talking after that. This happened six times in five years when they flirted, sexed, slept, and ghosted. So this Facebook notification was the start of the next cycle and they would have ended up in bed soon if I didn't see the notification that night. She cried and said nothing. Unlike last time, my emotions took over my anger and I cried like a helpless child. Felt like a gush of emotions flowing out in the form of tears. She pleaded with me to forgive her and that she would never talk to a fair partner and would never cheat on me again. I didn't say anything, but I have made another appointment with the therapist and this time I would be visiting alone. Now that I know that it is not a one-time thing, I'm pretty much clear on what I want to do. We are still in our late thirties and have a couple or more decades to go. I don't want to be with a person whom I cannot trust blindly. So yeah, I'm going to file for the separation soon. Soon? Why not today? What are you waiting for, OP? Meanwhile, your kids are probably wondering if they accidentally wandered onto the set of Days of Our Dysfunctional Lives instead of their usual after-school special. Update 4. We're in the middle of separation. It's a tough time for the family, especially the kids, but we have to do this, even for the sake of our children. We have been living separately since that day. She has offered me all sorts of options as trade-offs for divorce. The extreme of which is I can sleep with whoever I want and she wouldn't question me for that. I can have a mistress or an affair for a year until I assure her I'll come back to her and won't divorce her. It felt gross. That's not my idea of being married. I said I prioritize loyalty over everything else. I was loyal in my marriage and if I have to do what she's offering, why do I have to be married to her? I said separation is inevitable, but if she really wants to repent or do something for me, she should let me go without being greedy. We would be co-parenting our children. I have offered her to live in our house with the kids, so there's minimal change in the children's life. I have seen a place for myself, a tiny one for my single self, but it would take a month to get the possession. Until then, the guest bedroom is my den. We have spoken to the children about the separation, enrolled them for therapy. We are seeking counseling as a family and as individuals to be able to cope with the changing dynamics. 
It feels terrible to be separated from my children, but I think that's the best for all of us. They have seen us fighting and yelling at each other, and that's not a pleasant sight either. Seeing their parents living separately is heartbreaking for them, but soon they would understand that it's for everyone's good when they see us as happy individuals. We'll update the thread as the situation progresses. Update 5 It was not as easy as I thought. The day I was moving out was quite a disaster for me and my family, including Sudibiak's wife. I was anticipating this to be hard, but since I was living with them, I didn't realize it to be this hard. There was too much crying and emotions burst out. Soon to be ex-wife tried until the last to talk me out of the separation, but it was off the radar. I packed up and took my children to my new place. This was to make them understand that they have two houses and dad is still here for them, even though living apart. When I was leaving, she hugged me and cried. I'm still mad at her, but I let her cry on my shoulder. She says she also wanted to come to my new house. I said she's not welcome there. She broke down so badly that she didn't care that the children were around and said, I bargained my happy and stable marriage for something so cheap and meaningless. What I did has no importance in my life, and yet I lost everything for that. I said I understand the pain and helplessness she's going through, but she's the one responsible for this. No one, not even the affair partner, has any accomplice in her misery. After knowing about their affair pattern, it doesn't look like they had any sort of emotional connection. It sounds like an occasional cold sex, and they move on in their individual lives. Sadly for wife, I was able to get to the truth that she has to go through this while a fair partner is leading his life peacefully with his wife and children. Not sure if soon to be ex has updated a fair partner about her divorce. They might completely cut off of each other after this if a fair partner treasures his marriage and doesn't want to end up having a fate like soon to be ex. Or they may go deeper into the affair, their business. Don't want to break my head over this. Some of you commented that I should inform a fair partner's wife about the secret affair. Like me, she also must be in the dark about this. Yeah, that makes sense, but I'm yet to dig into that thought. I have a very limited coordinates about a fair partner and trying to find the channel to contact his wife would be a task. So maybe once I'm settled into this new place, I'll try to reach out to her. We'll try updating this thread whenever possible, but even if I don't or delay it, want you all to know that I appreciate all the support I got here. Thanks. Wow, what a roller coaster ride you've been on, OP. The Divorce Olympics, where the hurdles are high and the finish line keeps moving. Separation is never easy, especially with kids involved, but it sounds like you're handling it with resilience. Your approach to the situation, despite its challenges, is refreshing. It's commendable that you're prioritizing your children's well-being while navigating through this difficult time. Co-parenting can be tough, but it seems like you're committed to making the transition as smooth as possible for them. What do you make of this? Do you have a similar story? Share it with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.